Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Nick Board, and I'm today's facilitator for the financial literacy and housing obligations along with financial aid. Um, this is part of our ongoing webinar series to help prepare you for moving and to understand um, how housing is here for you and your student success. And with every presentation, uh, we like to start off with our mission statement. Everything that housing and residential life is guided by our mission statement. It guides the staff we hire, the programs we offer, our facilities and overall experience we provide to you. We really work to foster your student learning and success by engaging you outside of the classroom, as well as providing safe, comfortable and convenient housing and dining facilities that allow our residents to grow in their own self-awareness and cross cross-cultural understanding. Um, and so we like to start off every presentation with that as a reminder of why we do what we do. Today's presenters, we have Tracy Nadine Motley, who is an assistant director for housing and dining services with Housing and Residential Life. And then we also have Meredith Bond, who's a financial aid officer with the Office of Student Financial Aid. And so today we're gonna cover understanding your financial obligations where to find your housing bill, some of your payment options, as well as understanding your financial aid and some of the common outstanding financial aid requirements that might be holding you up. And so with that, I would like to turn it over to Tricina. Thank you, Nick. Um, welcome everyone. And I hope you get something out of this um, webinar. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about housing and dining obligations. Um, choosing to live on campus is an investment in your college experience like signing a lease, an apartment, or a new car, signing a license agreement, entering you into an academic year-long contract. Students are financially responsible for payment of all housing and dining charges by the published due dates. Your housing and dining fees are billed by the semester, fall and winter. Your housing and dining fees are part of your student. Therefore, you will see these charges on your e-bill along with your tuition and other fees. You are responsible for all charges through the end of the license agreement, which is May 5th, 2021. Next, I'm going to talk, to talk a little bit about cancellations after July 20th. You can find this information on cancellation process by going to housing.wayne.edu, look under resident resource, your obligations and cancellation process. Our request to cancel your license agreement must be completed online through your housing self-service portal. Select the 2021 Resident Hall and Apartment Cancellation Request Form. Review the cancellation terms and sign the document. Answer all the questions. Your request will be reviewed by the Office of Housing and Residential Life, and you will receive an email to your WSU email account. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to find your, um, your bill. The student e-bill only generates once a month, and it's a snapshot of what the account looked like on that day. The student account summary shows account activity in real time. WSU communicates student tuition and fee bill information electronically, usually e-bill. Registered students can access their e-bill statement by logging into Academica. New e-bill statements are prepared on the first business day of each month and are available for students viewing and printing online a day after. A notification is sent to each student's WSU email account where a new e-bill available online. The email notification will include a greeting, some information about the billing statement, and a link to Academica, where the new e-bill is available. No sensitive student information will be in the email notification. These are just um, our payment options. Excuse me. There are several ways to pay your student account. Financial aid and our scholarship, tuition assistance programs, electronic check or ACH transaction, credit card, or by mail. You also accept international wire transfer through Flywire and domestic wire transfers. Please be sure to contact the cashier's office for banking information and specifications if you're gonna do a wire transfer. And I'll hand it over to my colleague, Meredith. Oh. Before we introduce Meredith into this, I just want to remind you that if you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A box in Zoom and we'll hopefully get them answered for you. Meredith? Yeah. 
So first of all, a basic, what is financial aid? It's any funds that help with the cost of college. These can be institutional funds, federal funds, state funds. Grants and scholarships are funds that don't have to be repaid. We accept them on behalf, on your behalf because they don't have to be repaid and we don't want to delay any disbursement of these funds. Student loans are loans that do have to be repaid as you are borrowing that funding. Um, these can be from federal or private sources. We have information about private lenders on our account or on our website, even though we're not affiliated with any specific lenders, but federal loans should be offered to you as long as you have completed your FAFSA. Work study, you do have to apply for work study through our website. These are job opportunities within the university, which you'll earn money. It's a need-based award, so you have to have room in your overall cost of attendance to accept this award. And it'll be awarded to you just like a normal paycheck would be. I hope you have all completed your FAFSA, your free application for federal student aid by now. If you haven't, it's really important that you complete it as soon as possible. You can find our school code right there, 002329. Um, it's important to file your FAFSA so that you can be awarded all financial aid that you are eligible for. The FAFSA will calculate your expected family contribution or your EFC, and your EFC is used to award all financial aid, including some private scholarships. Um, there are some institutional aid that doesn't need your EFC, but to be considered for all institutional aid, we highly recommend that you file your FAFSA. To view your financial aid award package, you can log into Academica. Academica is pretty much the hub for all of your financial aid inquiries and requirements. Um, you can find your awards through your student resources tab in Academica, following the financial aid tab, and then my award information. On your award, you'll see all grants, scholarships, loans that you have been awarded specific to you. You can see the annual limit for loan, federal loan funding on the right hand side there. Um, these are federal limits that you can be awarded for the academic year. That'll be split between the fall and winter semester. You can, if, as an incoming freshman, if that's what you are, you can receive 5,500 in the full academic year, which would be split between fall and winter. So that'd be 2750. Um, the subsidized loan is considered a need-based loan because you have to have room in your overall cost of attendance to be awarded that loan or to be offered that loan. Um, it's considered need-based because the government pays the interest on it as long as you are enrolled at least half time. The unsubsidized loan is awarded to all students and it's not considered need because you don't have to have any need to be awarded it and it collects interest as soon as it is dispersed. The Parent PLUS loan is an option available to parents of dependent undergraduate students. This is a credit-based loan and you can borrow up to the cost of attendance of your student. Um, these loans have a fixed interest rate of 5.3%, which could be more beneficial than some private lenders, but this would be a loan that is in the parent's name and the parent is responsible for paying back. Something to consider is the loan origination fee. All federal loans have this loan origination fee. The Parent PLUS loan is higher of 4.236%. That's just important to remember when you think about how much you want to borrow, as that will be taken out of the total cost. If you're looking through your financial aid award and you decide that you want to accept some of your student loans, you can do that through your Academica. Again, through Student Resources Financial Aid, accept my financial aid awards. You can accept all our partial amount of the loans. To check your outstanding requirements, you would also do so through Academica, just following that highlighted my financial aid requirements section there. Uh, many of our forms are electronic, so if you do have outstanding requirements and you click that button, it should be linked back to the form that you have to complete. If a portion of your form has to be completed by your parent, what happens is we ask for a parent's email 
and then it'll be emailed to your parent for them to complete the rest of it. And that's also how your parent would be able to sign the form electronically. We ask that you get all documents and requirements into us as soon as possible because we don't want to hold up your disbursements. If you were selected for verification, you should hopefully be aware by now because you would have received, um, you would have received notification after you submitted your FAFSA on your student aid report. You should have also received emails and reminders from us, the financial aid office, just reminding you that you have outstanding requirements. This is a process required by the Department of Education. And when you're selected by the Department of Education, we as your financial aid office have to verify that the information provided on the FAFSA is accurate. So we might ask for income or tax documents or a household size document, et cetera, just to verify that the information on the FAFSA is accurate. Again, if you are selected, just use the links and follow the instructions to complete the forms. If you have any questions about why you were selected or how this process goes, you can always email us. Our contact information, I believe, is on the next few slides. Um, but our email is studentservice at wayne.edu. Definitely reach out to us if you were selected and you have questions. Check your email frequently as well, because if you have all documents submitted and for some reason we need additional documentation or clarification on any of your documents, we will contact you to your Wayne State email. So some important dates, your bill is technically due on August 15th, but your financial aid won't disperse until August 24th, assuming that you have all your requirements fulfilled. So when you see your bill, you'll want to factor in your financial aid that was set to disperse. We can't disperse it any sooner, just based on your federal regulations. We have to wait 10 days before the semester starts, before we're able to start dispersing. Um, but you'll notice that late fees aren't going to be assessed until September 16th. So you do have some time to wait to make a payment and you can wait for your financial aid to disperse before any late fees or additional fees will be added to your bill. We have some additional events coming up. The Student Service Center Express will allow you to connect with a student service specialist. You can register for that event on Slate, which is your application portal. Um, I think this would be very helpful for anyone who has questions after this event is over and you wanna get those answered. You can see the dates there. You can also see our, that's our phone number. It looks like our email got a little cut off there. So our phone number is 313-577-2100 if you have any specific student questions or our email is studentservice at wayne.edu. And then we have more events in the special circumstance appeals seminars um, you can see the dates there. These are for students whose finances might be a little different than they were in 2018, as the current FAFSA bases your EFC off of your 2018 wage and income information. We know that that might not be as accurate as it is today. So if you have any circumstances that you think you could change your EFC, as in lower it to hopefully get you more need-based aid, you can submit a special circumstance appeal. If you wanna get more information on that, we do have information available on our website, but we also have these events, which can be really helpful. Thanks, Meredith. Um, so now we wanna open it up to some of the Q&A. Um, also with um, Tricina and Meredith, we have two representatives from our Residence Life team. If you have some other housing specific questions, so Mark Anderson and Jennifer Johnson, who are community directors, are also on this call. Um, the first question is, and I think Tricina, if you could help with this, is I have a question of when my son's room and board charges will show up on his account. I checked last week and his tuition was the only charge identified. Tricina, I think you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just talking. Um, 
the housing charges um, will export tonight from our system onto the student account, and you should see that tomorrow morning. Thank you. You're um, and then on my bill, it says resident or res tuition. Is that my housing? Because I also got the Detroit Promise, and that should cover my tuition. I don't understand my bill for this fall semester. Okay. I believe that means you're uh, a resident of the state of Michigan tuition. But we have in-state tuition and we have out-of-state tuition. So I believe that is um, in-state tuition. Yeah, that's what that is exactly. Um, since your financial aid hasn't dispersed yet, it'll be set to disperse in the um, 24th of August. You'll still see that charge until your Detroit Promise disperses. All right. And then, Meredith, what is the deadline for financial aid applications if they haven't filed yet? If you haven't filed, we just recommend doing so as soon as possible. You can technically file until June of next year, but if you don't file within the semester, then you might not be able to receive financial aid for the semester. So I'd say try and get it done as soon as possible, but at least by December 1st for the semester. And then when is my scholarship applied to my student account? Hopefully before my bill is due. I don't know how much I have received, but it has not been added to my account, thus reducing the amount I owe. Um, if you mean your bill, it won't disperse until the 24th. But if you mean your financial aid award on Academica, if you're expecting to see a scholarship that isn't there, definitely reach out to us through email or phone and we can look up your account more specifically and see what's going on there. Right. And then last year I received a loan, but I haven't been offered a, that same loan this year. Who can I contact to talk that, about that? Um, if you filled out your FAFSA, then you should have loan offers for from the federal government. If you got a private loan, then you would want to reach out to the private loan lender because you might have to reapply for that. All right. And then if does my Detroit Promise scholarship only cover tuition? If so, does that mean I would just have to pay for my room and meal plan? Yes, exactly. Your Detroit Promise or any tuition pledge program like Wayne Access are part of Detroit covers your tuition and your fees that come with tuition, but it doesn't cover your housing and room and board, which would maybe be a great opportunity to take out some of those two months. All right. Um, and then I currently have a hold on my account from a spring course I recently took and have a scholarship from Apex Scholars. Um, when can I expect those types of scholarships to be processed on my account? Yeah, I know our scholarships unit is working on getting those um, APEC scholars scholarships on their accounts right now currently. So hopefully this week. If you don't see it by then, I would contact our scholarship unit directly and that be scholarships at wayne.edu, that's their email, and they can connect you with more detailed information. Um, and then, Tresina, I think you might be able to help with this too. Um, so the student bill is not necessarily correct just yet because it doesn't take financial aid and other um, payments into account yet. And if the um, financial aid disperses, will it automatically update on August 24th or when can I see um, how much I actually still owe? I'm trying to understand your question. So the question is, they don't see the scholarship on their account yet? I think not on their, their bill quite yet. Um, right. So any, any, any scholarship, financial aid, anything like that you will not see on your bill. The only thing you'll see on your bill is, um, I believe, what you owe. Um, and disperse the week of the 24th. Now, um, if you want to see what you're going to get, all you have to do is go into Academica under uh, financial aid award, and then show me everything that you're going to get. You got to make sure that you accept all those awards because if you don't accept them, they won't disperse. All right. And then um, 
Another question was, most of the students um, are still suffering due to this pandemic. Are you, are you planning on suspending late fees for the fall semester as well? Okay, well, um, the late fees, is um, that is the decision of the bursar. And um, as of right now, it's not going to be suspended. Um, but, you know, we can let them know that it was a question that was asked on this webinar. But that would come um, out of the bursar office. All right. Um, let's see. And then there are a few move-in related questions. Um, and so on the housing app, it shows dates and times for move-in according to our name. Um, but I received an email stating that we'll have to sign up for housing times. When sh what schedule should I abide by? Um, so I can go ahead and answer this. Right now we're still finalizing some of the details of move-in uh, as a pandemic uh, has evolved our strategy. The email, uh, all students who will need to move in for the fall received an email on Friday with uh, some of the new information. We are extending move in to a week long process. Um, and soon you'll be able to sign into your housing self service portal to select your building in a move in date and time. Um, so that the information in the email is the most accurate. Um, as the application was established before the pandemic took over. All right, let's see. And then another question was, so the Warrior Scholarship for 6K should be visible on my current bill or can I find that elsewhere? You'd find that on your financial aid award. Nothing has dispersed, so nothing will be on your bill, but you can see what you're gonna be getting on your award. All right, and then a question wanting to know um, what fees and charges will get covered by a Heart of Detroit award? That'll be your full tuition costs, your registration fee, your student service fee, and that'll be covered. And then another question asking, how do you apply for financial aid? Um, you file your FAFSA, your free application for federal student aid. That's available at studentaid.gov. Just checking a few of the other questions coming in. There was one other question regarding the COVID test for move-in. Um, right now we are requiring all students moving in on their check-in day um, to take a COVID test. Um, even if you have taken one of these prior that also checks for antibodies, we are still requiring that you complete this test at no charge to you. It looks like all the questions that have come in um, if you have any other questions, we'll stick around for a few more minutes. Go ahead and put them in the Q&A box. Also would like to remind you that we have a series of these webinars continuing weekly. Um, some of our next topics that can be found at housing.wing.edu forward slash events include preparing for move in as well as what you can expect for move in. All right. um, and then another question just came in that um, is the cost of attendance shown in Academica accurate? Yeah, it should be. Um, yeah, for the fall and winter combined semesters, that should be your total. And then another question around the COVID test for the move-in helper. Um, currently, we're not requiring any move-in helper to also take a COVID test. Right now, it is just for the resident. You'll receive more information regarding COVID testing and the requirements as, move, as your move-in date approaches.
give it one more minute for anyone who has any additional questions. Again, a question around the COVID test. If a resident tests positive, um, what are we going to do? Uh, that information will be shared with any resident who is who tests positive and will work on moving um, to make appropriate arrangements um, following our quarantine and isolation process, which can be found at housing.wayne.edu forward slash coronavirus. Another question came in saying that um, their tuition and fees cost changed um, from around 13,000, which it's been for a few months to around $19,000. Can you explain what might be the, um, the determining factor in that increase? Yeah, so we have been using an estimated cost of tuition and fees on your accounts for the past few months. But now that you've actually been billed tuition and fees, we take your actual tuition and fee costs from your bills and put it in your cost of attendance. So if you're seeing an increase or decrease in your cost of attendance, that would likely be why as of this week. Again, if you have any other questions, feel free to put it in the Q&A box. And then a oh, question just came in wanting to saying that I just got in, but how do we see the due dates of our housing and tuition and fees? So the question is how do you see the tu housing and tuition? What's the question? Yeah, I I think this person joined late um, and okay. they we're just wondering where to see the due dates for their housing as well as tuition and fees. Um, you'll see it on your, um, your e-bill, which will be out on August the 1st and you should be able to see it the next day. Um, but um, tuition and fees are due um, on the 15th of August and um, you get, you're, you get assessed late fees if not paid by September the 15th. So it looks like those are all the questions that have come in. Um, I want to thank you for joining us today. If you have any other questions, um, you can reach out to us via live chat on housing.wayne.edu. There's also a ton of information and the search bar works really, really great. Um, you can shoot us an email at housing.wayne.edu or you can give us a call and leave a voicemail at 313-577-2116. Um, right now, most of our staff are working remotely um, and we'll reply to your voicemail with the number that you leave as soon as possible in the order that they were received. And we hope that you're able to join us for some of our future webinars over the next few weeks. This webinar will also be, re or has been recorded and will be posted on its entirety at housing.wayne.edu forward slash events. So again, thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you at future webinars.